Welcome back everybody. It's been uh, obviously quite a long time and um, today's the day when we're going to do my own personal gun. I've been quite apprehensive about doing this gun. That's why we've not done a little video for a little while. <coughs> we're going to refrain a little bit from talking. We're going to refrain a little bit from talking too much about the history of the Marukus. We've done a little bit of talking about that. We're going to refrain a little bit about a little bit from the models as well, and we're going to talk about this gun that we've got in front of us specifically. Does it look all right, Paul? Yeah, all good. Okay, mate. Right. So, what we've got is we've got a Maruku Model 800, and this gun dates from 1970. Early 1970, mid late 1970, couldn't tell you. I know it's I know it's vintage is 1970. This gun unfortunately was not sold brand spanking new in England. This gun was picked up direct from the factory. We'll talk about that in a minute. So what we can't do is we can't use the normal date code system which I've showed you in previous videos to date the age of the gun. What we have to do is we have to find guns that have been here in the UK proofed and we look at the date code system on those guns and we look at the serial number system and we can approximately or I can approximately tell you that the gun is 1970. Bearing in mind that it's 2020, the gun's 50 years old. Part of the reason why I've left this gun till this year and part of part of the reason now part of the reason we left it this year is because it's 50 years old now thanks to Leroy's ramblings which I have mentioned in previous videos I can tell you that this gun is a type 3 action so it's a V spring action V spring main springs V spring ejector springs V spring top lady dust springs now when we look at the top lever spring, it varies ever so slightly. Read Leroy's ramblings, it will tell you. So it's the markings that we're looking for. As I've said again and again and again and again and again, with Maruku, they don't mark to say it's a superior grade, it's a hunter grade, a venture grade, a diamond grade. They don't mark. All you can do with, with the guns is look at pictures, uh, get an idea of, of what people are selling the guns and calling the guns. So, where to start and where to finish? Now, as I've mentioned, Maruku Model 800, I don't like particularly calling them a Model 800 again because it's not marked as a Model 800. Also, as Leroy Ramblings calls it, Leroy's Ramblings calls it a uh, Type 2, Type 3. Type 4. Again, we, we can't corroborate that because there is no magic book out there with everything written in. Wish there was, wish the Japanese would do it. Uh, so, probably what we've got, happen. Paul, is we've got a Packmire decelerator recoil pad. Now, part of the reason, I'm going to lift it up, Paul, and I'm going to show you part of the reason that I don't like customization was because with, with this recoil pad, I was talking to another gun shop, uh, a guy who worked in a gun shop, and he said, oh, I see you've had a, a recoil pad put on it. Uh, well, no. So, this is a Packmire decelerator recoil pad, and quite clearly, at some point, Maruku had quite a bit of sway in the fact that they had their own name stamp. It does say BC Maruku. Does, yeah. I've read it so <laughs> many times. So, we've got BC Maruku there. Now... This is part of the reason why I don't like customization. Had we changed this recoil pad for something else, we wouldn't know that this had come direct from the factory. We've also got Maruku's, uh, Maruku's skeetish style stock with its drop and its dimensions, i.e. we've got two and a half here at the front of the comb, two at the center of the comb, two and a half inches at the back of the comb. And the overall length of the gun pole is 14 inches on the nose now 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 
Maruku's, Maruku's lacquer coating, polyurethane, whatever you'd like to call it. So because this is a higher grade gun than a standard, or the engraving is higher engraved, this, can you see these lines, Paul? Yeah. This is Indian ink, all right? So this has been drawn on at the factory. This has been drawn on at the factory to give it slightly more aesthetic appeal. Also here, yep, yep here, yep. here, and here. Now, this gun, Paul, the base model is a superior model. The reason that we know that is because we've got a pistol grip cap and a white line. Some of the slightly lower grades have got uh, no pistol grip cap, okay? Now, again, touching on customization, Paul, we've got a few knocks and scratches and dings and dents on this gun. Now, this is my own personal gun that I have owned for the last five or six years and anybody that knows me will be getting quite bored by now on how much I go on about this gun. So what we could do is we could strip this lacquer off the stock, yeah? yeah. We could refinish it and we could oil it, but what you're gonna lose is you're going to lose the Indian ink, all right? So, <clears throat> so there's just part of it, Paul. We've also got Indian ink here on the fore end, yeah. just here. Most people wouldn't see this, Paul. No, you can just see it, can't you? You can just pick it up. One there, one there, just here, yep. and then one here as well. Okay? That's it. Just trying to get it in there. There we go, yeah, got it out of glare. Can you see it there? Yeah. Okay. So, I am, unfortunately, Paul, I'm unfortunately going to underdo this gun. I've, I've been talking about it for a very, very long time and um, today's the day we're gonna do the what, video. What, what I've said in previous videos is it's every mortal piece that, that is on the gun that tells a story about the gun. This gun came from the factory as a two barrel set. So in 1970, multi chokes were a very, very, very new idea. I'm not even 100% if they were mainstream yet or not. So years ago, what we did, if you wanted different chokes, you generally had two sets of barrels. This one happens to be a 26 inch skeet gun barrels. And although it's marked, which I will get Paul to show us in a minute, even though it's marked SNS Skeet and Skeet or Special Skeet, it still measures quarter quarter at the internal bore dimension. So it measures 729 and then it measures 739 or something like that. 10 foul quarter choke basically on a two and three quarter inch chamber. And these barrels, which are unusual, these barrels are 30 inch. They are marked three inch chambers, wild fowling. They're marked full and full. Now, I've had people, oh yes, 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 I know that gun, Tim, yes, yeah, a trap pack. Well, it's not a trap pack. If it was a trap pack, it would be marked called, uh, three quarters and full, and it would be marked with two and three quarter inch chambers, and it'd have a wide rib. This has got a narrow rib, it's got skeet stock, it's got a game fore end on it, and it's got profuse game scene engraving on it. Therefore, this gun was a factory custom gun. Now, this gun has been imported from America, and the, the, so there's, there's several different reasons, and I, I can't explain it all on camera, and, and it's very difficult to explain to you how I know it all. After working in here every day for 17 years, you pick a little bit of it up. Well, this gun was purchased direct from the Maruku factory. How do I know that? Reading different bits, talking to people, mainly reading is what it is. 
So in Japan, in the 70s, the Americans had lots of air bases. We all know why. But the Americans had quite a strong presence in Japan. It was a, it was a bit of an experience for an American GI to go to the Japanese factory and to purchase their own gun. If you read Leroy's Ramblings, that's just one place that will tell you that. So this gun was bought direct from the factory. The man walked into Japan, walked into the Maruku factory in Japan. He asked for something a little bit special, and this is a gun that we got here. What is also quite nice about it, the barrels haven't been re-blacked, the stock hasn't been refinished, the, the recoil pad is original to the gun. And other than a few light handling marks, which we will show you, this is as it came from the factory. The engraving is so unusual that's on it, with all of the videos that I've done since the very first one that we've done back in May 15, uh, 18, uh, about a, a little Beretta. I've had this gun for a long time and I've been pondering how to do the video. So let's bring the camera back over Paul and let's just show a few more things that are on the gun before we start taking it apart and looking at some of the other places, all right? So we've got 12 bore, three inch chambers, yeah? Yeah. Which denotes wild fouling, okay? We've got a narrow rib that's on it. Yeah. You've got Maruku's version of a file cut rib, okay? It wasn't cut by hand with a file, it would have been passed through a machine. This style, this wavy line style, is Maruku's style. See, it's missing a mid beat pole. Oh, yeah. It's because it fell out and I couldn't find one good enough to put back in it yet. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's missing a mid bead. This one's got a mid bead that's on it. All right, mid bead there. Same, same rib. Can you see? Yeah. yeah. Same rib. Okay. And you've also got poor, I don't know if you can see, but they've, of this era, they've got a slight step here. Just yeah, there, yeah, see it? Both of them have got it. Both yeah. of them have got it. Now, put that on safe. Put that on safe. I will take the fore end off it and we will have a look at some of the chokings, some of the markings that are on. Some of the markings that are on it. I.e. So, one star full, two star full. S and S, special skate. Yeah. Special skate. This measures full and full, these barrels, these measure quarter, quarter, even though they're marked. Also, now, I've, I've put some tape over the serial number, uh, just because I felt I wanted to, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Can we see that this one is marked 1B? Here we go Yep. One's marked 1B, yep. and if you have a look at the other one, it's marked 1. Can you see? Yep, got it. Now, they're in a slightly different font, which tells me that they were made on different lines, basically. Yeah. Can you see the font slightly different? Yeah, this was slightly different. So, what I've said in the past, I genuinely feel Maruku were... I genuinely feel Maruku were, were, were cataloguing them. Why would they need to know one and one B? Yeah. So, with the fact I worked here for a very long time, as I've said, I had a bit of a head start in the fact that my, my dad, the man that told me, had been looking for a very long time, and the moment that we saw this gun, we realised that it was something pretty special. I've spoken to a hell of a lot of people in the gun trade that can't tell me anything about it. Nothing, nothing at all. What you will get some people say, is you'll get some people say, oh, that was for the American market. Well, that's just like a get out, get out of jail free card for them. That was, 
that was their way of saying we don't know what it is, basically. I think you've actually emailed uh, people in America and yeah. Japan and, and yeah. they've said they can't come back. Like it, no. They can't come back to me. Or they haven't come back to me, unfortunately. Instead of just going, well, Tim, that's unusual. Also, these guns... Hope we get a little... That's all right, that's all right. I'm just going to do a little teaser. <laughs> just a little teaser. Because we're going to move on to it anyway. So, Again, what's unusual is the barrels are engraved on these. That's why I've put some electrical tape on the barrels. And we will look at, we will look at all of them. Now... The other thing that I'm forgetting to mention, Paul, is I've got another one of these, and when you look at the engraving on this one, the next one that I've got has got twice as much. So, so yes, it, it, it's, it's difficult to explain how excited I was and how excited I am that, that I can show you this gun. So if anybody has got a Maruku like this, or knows of a Maruku like this, please give me a buzz, get in touch with me, and uh, we will we will we'll talk, we'll converse. Other than that, I'm trying to show people that haven't got access to this gun, I'm trying to show people the engraving because it's quality, it deserves some respect because most people are oh, saying old Maruku mate, isn't it? Let's bring, bring the camera So over, we've got please. engraving of four ducks, three of them in flight, done in silver. We've got two pheasants, three pheasants on the other side, and we've got two partridge on the bottom. Now, I should have got my engraver, uh, I should have got my turn screw out, to be honest with you. I should have got my turn screw out. So that engraving is like nothing seen on a Maruku? No, Paul. No. Not like any other Maruku I've ever seen, and I try to look for them left, right and centre. Now, let's just point out to you, Paul, I'm using a knife because it's, it's the only thing I've got to hand. So we've got the sky. Remember we, we did this yeah, with the... We did this with the we did this with the uh, that presentation grade we had didn't we yep is that, or worse? is that better i'll try the iphone out so let's count how many points of definition now i measured it earlier paul from here to here yep. is an inch and a half and from here to here is an inch. Yeah. So somebody would be able to work out, but that surface area that that guy's worked with there was very, very small, yet he's got a full game scene on the side of it, not just a little bit. So we've got sky, we've got mountains, we've got definition on the mountains, yeah? Yep. We've got definition over here, we've got trees in the foreground, yeah. We've got a hillside, we've got definition on the hillside, we've got a riverbank starting from this tree here, moving past the birds, we've got a river with definition all round the birds, so what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight layers of definition, nine with the reeds, ten with the river bank, river, river, the river, river bank, and we've got eleven with the silver birds that are on the side there, yes? Yep. Now, <coughs> I'm trying to get good pictures so people can see. I've looked at this gun pool for hours and hours and hours and hours, and it fascinates me the time that the guys wasted on it, okay? You've got your trees, you've got your birds. Now, what my gunsmith Rob said to me, Paul, that was very, very interesting, he said, have you noticed him, how the birds are done in silver? Yes, which I had. What he has said to me was, if you was trying to impress somebody, you'd have done it in gold. Yeah. The reason Maruku didn't do it in gold is because gold, it can look 
a little bit leery, especially in 1970. Mm -hmm. Now, we've also got, Paul, now this is one of the bits that fascinates me the most, yeah. is if you look at that tree and you look at those leaves, can you, can you, can you go in very close yeah, on the leaves? Quite close to it. Can you see that they're like centre punches? Yeah. So that was done with a centre punch. I don't know if anybody who's an engineer and used a centre punch, but this engraver used what he had to hand, okay? He also, look at the depth of the cuts here and here and here. He wasn't using a graver, he was using a chisel to do that. Yeah. All right? Now, I don't know because they are slightly characterised, I don't know quite what oriental duck that is. Could well be a mallard, I'm sure it'll be an oriental duck of some sort, but they're slightly naive. Mm. They're not, but they are, if you see what I'm saying. They don't look like a typical duck you'll find on a game scene. No. So we've got this one in flight, flying away. We've even got tips of the wings here, a beak, eyes, the, the eyelashes around the eye, that's not the word I'm looking for, but you can see what I'm getting at, can't you? Yeah. That engraving, Paul, is the most deeply, highly engraved, except for the next one, Maruku, that I've ever seen. And I'm trying to do this gun justice by showing you, not just you, Paul, everybody that watches the videos. Yep. Also, also, can you see this chrysanthemum? Yeah. It's not quite a chrysanthemum, it's a flower, that one. I'll move on to the chrysanthemum in a minute. But what I would like people to look at on their own gun is the how delicate these petals of this flower are. I was looking at a gun earlier on today. If you put your own gun alongside these, you will see that these are a little bit more delicate. Yeah. Now, if you also look, Paul, we've, we've tried to look as much as we can at that game scene. Let's have a look at the scroll around the outside, okay? Here, here, as I said, this traditional scroll. Me, because I've looked at it for so long, Paul, I am of the opinion the guy that done the game scene is not the guy that done the scroll on the outside. Yeah. Have a look at it make your own mind up also let's roll it over and let's look at the underside of the action could you no i'll hold it i've got it i've got it i've got it, I've got it. so we've got our traditional maruku written bc maruku japan uh, bc maruku which i believe it was probably done in silver it might be some sort of ceramic now just trying to figure out. I'm going to have to put the camera down. I'm going to have to put the camera down because I'm going to, have to go back to my knife. Now, we'll move on to the game scene in a minute. And the reason that we're showing this, if anybody looks at their own gun, they will see that this, again, it's got a particular name, this banner, this, this piece yeah. is uniformed or it, it follows the same style as many Marukus that you will see. The difference is, most Marukus, the engraving will finish about here. Yeah. This one has carried on all the way up to here. Yeah. We've also got, in the corners of the action, this engraving here, and this engraving here, and a scroll along here. Also, Paul, here. Yeah. Most normal Marukus would finish about here, and this one has been carried on all the way up to just in front of the rear lumps, both sides. Yep. Also, we've got on the trigger guard, Paul, Maruku engraving. Most Marukus that you look at of these superiors, they will have the border of the trigger guard engraved. Yep. They won't have the centre of the trigger guard, okay? Also here, Paul, between, I'll roll it around, I'll roll it around. Also, here at the front trigger guard tang, this isn't normally here. Yeah. And at the back trigger guard tang, this, can you see it? Yeah, I'll be just, yep, just getting it. This isn't normally engraved. Yep. Okay. One tiny little scroll, is that? It is two or three there, Paul. Yep. There. 
turf free. Oh, yeah. Now, let's have a look at the partridge on the bottom of the action. We can clearly see that this is two partridge, and we can see, and I haven't measured it, Paul, but that's about three quarters of an inch across. Yeah. Could be half an inch across, and, oh, dear me, I'll tell you what I use, because I've got it in my pocket. A 1.7 HMR case, okay? So people can see just how small, come on, see on there, you bugger, just how small that engraving is. And what we've got is a whole game scene again, Paul. Yeah. yeah. So we've got your partridge in flight, probably being walked up. You've got some grass, potentially reeds, but we know partridge live in fields, so it's going to be grass. We've got our tree. We've got our centre punched leaves again. Yeah. But here in the background, Paul, look, we've got a field. Yeah. We've got a field. Yeah. Let's turn that back on. We've got a field. We've also got a hedgerow and we've got some trees running along that hedgerow, yeah? yeah? This is how closely you have to look at the engraving. And if anybody wants some still pictures of it, please, please give us a buzz. Now, here, oh, again, Paul, sorry, 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 I'm going from pillar to post. The engraving here on the forend, the forend iron itself, yeah. this is traditional Maruku style, traditional Maruku style engraving here. Yeah. Where it differs is the fact that it's carried on through here. Yeah. yeah. See these little marks here? Yeah. They were done by somebody badly putting it alongside a semi-automatic and in a gun cabinet. Can you see them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where the, where the, uh, oh, come on, what's it? The cocking handle kicks out. Same again, Paul. This here isn't on a, it's there, but not as much as that on a traditional engraved gun. Yeah. So this piece isn't engraved on a standard Maruku here. Yeah. This piece is engraved here and down the sides of the forend iron or the forend release catcher engraved. Where this one differs is the fact that it's fully engraved in the centre. Yeah. Same, same again. Uh, engraving here and then carried on throughout here, yeah? Yep. Now, everything is covered in engraving. It's covered in engraving. Yeah. Bearing in mind, Paul, the other Maruku that I've got, which is exactly the same era, it's a 71 gun, not a 70, 70 gun. It's got twice as much engraving on it as this. So, people will see that I've done my own research. I've done my own research. Now, here, again, Paul, we've got three pheasants, one, one uh, sitting tight, two in flight or getting up, and we've got a whole scene again. Yeah. Now, what people will notice from the game, the, the wild fowling scene on one side to the pheasant shooting scene on the other side is how this one hasn't got the same... The, the, it, what's the word I'm looking for? It looks like he was starting to run out of a bit of time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if we look at this side, which obviously we have, you look at the detail, the four birds, Yeah. and then we look at this side. So also, got to remind myself, uh, we've got sky again, Paul. Yeah. We've got foreground again. Uh, we've got a skyline there. We've got trees here. They look like conifers to me, to be yeah, honest with so, you. Yeah. Conifers. Yeah. We've got his claw. The, the, the amount of detail that went into it, Paul, the time. Also, his eye looks like somebody's done it with a centre punch again. His eye's not... It's slightly naive, Paul. Yeah. It's beautifully naive. Absolutely beautifully naive. Now, I'm going to flip it from pillar to post again, Paul. See the see the the flower on the side here. Yeah. On the very edge of the flower, forget the flower itself. Can you see where it's in, in, engraved here? Yeah. Here, 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 here. Yeah. All the way around. 
Now when I roll it round, we haven't engraved this side. Oh no. We've, we've, we've done a line round it, but we haven't engraved here, here, here and here. That's because he spent his time doing that game scene there. Yeah. All right? The guy that put this engraving on the side of this gun in Japan, Paul, was the master. All right? He, he couldn't just engrave. He was the man. So, 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 so. And it's not signed. It's not signed anywhere. Also on the top of the action there, Paul, full coverage scroll. Yep. Full coverage scroll, our chrysanthemum, which is the Japanese royal family's crest, I believe, chrysanthemum. Also, your engraving here, Paul, follows the, tr the normal traditional style, there's just more of it. Yeah. Okay? Same here, we're engraved here, which isn't normally engraved on a normal Maruku. Yep. We're also engraved, push safe catch out. On. We're also engraved here. Yeah. We in, also we notice this small little crack that we got here. Yeah. Unfortunate. Am I going to worry about it? Not really. So people can see the, the slight crack. Also, so the serial number on this gun pole ends in one. Yeah. Okay. And the and the spare set of barrels end in one B. What interests me, and it just probably coincidence to be honest with you, but what interests me is we've got. Come on, brain. Four ducks on one side. Yeah. We got three pheasants on this side. Yeah. We got two partridges on the bottom, and the serial number ends in one. I don't, I don't, I don't quite understand why that <laughs> is, but it does. Now, let's have a look at let's have a look at our two sets of barrels, Paul, with the with the electrical tape taken off. So this on the shoulders here, Paul, yeah. is a very, very same engraving that you get on a grade five Maruku today. It's punched on or stamped on today, where it was engraved years ago. But can you see the quality of the engraving there that's been put on the barrels? Yeah. Now, it's been done on both guns and you can see that they vary. I would like you, Paul, just to rub your finger over it, just about there, and tell the people how sharp it is. That is very sharp. <laughs> For something that's 50-odd yeah. years old, that's what I was trying to do, so you could see how... I can't quite do it. What you can also feel, Paul... I think mean, you probably hear that on the video as to how... Can you? Is. I can definitely hear from here, yeah. So deeply done, Paul. So, so brave man. The engraver was so brave to deeply cut into the into the chamber here. 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 It, 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 it's just unusual, yeah. is what it is. It's unusual. We've got standard Maruku firearms, MFG, Co, Kyochi, Japan. And when you look, they're of exactly the same era, exactly the same style. But this gun, as I said, Paul, this was proved in 1992. Yeah. This gun wasn't made in 92. It obviously went into America at some point in its life. If anybody... Pop the camera back down, Paul. Pop the camera back down. If anybody's got any questions, anything they'd like to, to know, any still pictures, <clears throat> please get in touch with me. All of the videos have been have been to let you look at this one. So yeah, I, I really don't know. I'm very very apprehensive. I, I I'm not even 100% if I will release the video because I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm not showing, I'm not doing it his, his best justice, to be honest with you. So, yeah, I hope everybody enjoys it. I hope everybody likes it as much as I do. Another little shot, video. Just a, just a bit together. together. But that is factory custom, Paul. Oh, 
also you've got you've got <coughs> your Maruku deep blacking on it, yeah. which I believe is black chrome to be honest with you, which is what I've said in past videos. So yeah. yeah. Nice to see it all together. Yeah, and Paul, I've got a Winchester that will blow that gun out of the water for how rare it is. Mm -hmm. And the next Maruku that I've got, and the condition. So, this is in fairly clean condition. There are people out there that are looking at the knots and the scratches that are on it, and they'll think, oh, it wants redoing. No, no, believe me, it doesn't. Believe me, it doesn't. This is, this is very close to one off ball very close to factory custom it is factory custom not very close it is factory custom it was picked up at the japanese factory by an american gi and it has been bought into england i think i know how it come into england but i won't say there's also a few other things that are on it paul that, that tell me that it's maruku's own gun but yeah there you go people there we are